Hey everyone, this is Alan over at Cobblers Plus. Uh, we got a pair of these uh, Justin Fitz Patricks that were brought into us. It's a brand new pair. And today, if I can open this up, what we're doing is putting on these Lulu French toe plates uh, onto the toes to help reinforce that toe. There's also the Triumph toe plate, that's a brass one, but the gentleman requested the stainless steel Lulu ones here. So, go ahead and take them out of the box. It's like an unboxing video here, but uh, it's a very beautiful shoe or boot, I'm sorry, but I like it quite a bit. And the gentleman said that usually they have an option um, to put on the toe plates from Justin Fitzpatrick, but I guess uh, they, from what, I, what he told me, they no longer do that, which I find kind of odd. I'm going to have to look into that. But anyways, I was going to just show you how we do that for a new pair here. Um, now these do have what's called a invisible or a blind stitch, so on the bottom you don't really see any kind of stitch work here, but <clears throat> this is a Goodyear welted shoe. It's just that they took the leather, spliced it, folded it over, stitched underneath that, and then folded the leather back over. So that's how you get that nice smooth invisible stitch there. So we'll go ahead and get started now. It's a beautiful color too. Man, I'm going to. I want a pair of these. That same color too. That's just really nice, kind of burgundy wine wine color mixture almost. It's not full wine, but it's got a nice burgundyish color to it. But man, I really stuffed those good. But um, it's not a very common or popularly seen shoe here in the Denver area. So Justin, if you end up watching this, come visit us in Denver. We'd love to have you out here. You know, we're a growing city. We definitely have been expanding significantly here in Denver and I'm trying to bring a little bit more of this nice classy elegant style here to our state and uh, you know having you here would be definitely a tremendous uh, tremendous thing and I would love to meet you in person but again that is if you're watching this but otherwise uh, let's go ahead and get started so I'm gonna set these aside let me go ahead and make sure I grab the right size toe plates because these do come in a few different sizes and that is just much much too large there so let me make sure I get the right size for these and we'll see you back in just a second all right, so we figured out which size we need. Now, these uh, Lulu plates, they come in quite a few different sizes. Just lay them out there for you. Goes 70, 60, 50, and 40 millimeter as well. So there's a few other ones as well. From what I understand, there's an 80 and I think a 30 from what I understand, but I can't seem to hunt them down here in the States. I've tried quite a few places, so I have to get in contact with somebody outside of the U.S. just to get a hold of these um, and those other odd sizes. They're not common, but I'd rather have them just in case because you never know. Things happen and we get odd sizes. So like this pair here, the 40 millimeter fits it perfectly. I mean, it's the smallest one, but from the size of it and everything, how it lays here, just perfect. All right. Now, if we were to use, say, these triumph ones now the triumph ones they come a little a little more basic i guess you can say i'm not gonna take that off the last so they go like that there that's how it would line up and you can see how much it's sticking out quite a bit um, now these ones because of the way the holes are placed positioned these are intended to be sanded out on the edges so that it's more flush now, any of them still need to be sanded out just enough to be flush completely on the edges here, but the Triumph ones, you know, they're, they definitely stick out significantly more. So, not all shoes will they accommodate, unfortunately, either. Um, there's a few that I've come across that they just would not fit it, basically. It's either way too big or way too small. But, uh, anyways, so, at this point, let me get this a little bit closer here. I'm just going to be using the back end of my knife here to mark up where it's going to go. Make sure we've got it all lined up nicely. Alright. And then we'll just take the back end of the knife and 
just mark it just like that there. I don't like using a pen too much on these, um, especially because it's a new pair. Um, you know, the ink marks that are a little bit harder to get out, so, you know, kind of looks, kind of looks bad if, uh, if I leave it like that. And, I mean, of course, I'll try to take care of it, but it could only do so much. Now, at this point, we're going to be using a razor blade like that there, you know, just to start cutting in. Because these do not just sit over top, they're actually carefully positioned into the leather so that it's as flush as possible. And that's why it does come a little bit more at a cost, definitely, to do in this particular way. And there are some gentlemen that like to use what are called regular toe plates like these. There are different sizes of them and just have them nailed on over top. I can't stand these things. I mean, they, they're they horrific looking. They're just horrible looking. You can't do this to Justin Fitzpatrick. You can't do it even on a pair of Allen Edmonds. You know, it's just horrible. Don't do that. You know, get it done right. It'll last you 10 to even 20 times longer than those stupid little dinky things. You know, get it done right. Get a French toe plate. If you have problems with wearing out the heels, there are options for that as well. Um, they're called V cleats. It's a little V-shaped piece like that. We cut out a chunk here on the heel and position that V cleat right inside there, and it sits perfectly flushed. You know, don't don't do cheap things to nice shoes. Please don't. The polish is included too. Don't use cheap polish on your nice shoes. It doesn't last as long and doesn't hold up well either. Get this out of the way. At this point, it's a little bit easier for me to sit down just because I'm able to see where I'm cutting into. It takes a fairly steady hand and quite a bit of practice. Now, there is a faster way to do it, and that's to sand this out straight. But um, it does leave a little bit, uh, a little bit of an odd look behind. Also, um, plus you don't have quite as much control when you're sanding, even with the years and years of practice. You know, this here, cutting it carefully, works a lot better if you do it right. Now ideally, you want to get this done when the shoes are still being worked on, uh, put together, or resold. Uh, that way we're able to stitch this whole area here um, before putting on the toe tip, but after we've already cut into it, because on some shoes, sometimes we cut into the stitches. Now it doesn't, it doesn't really do much damage to it necessarily because this is going to be secured using little screws anyways, so it's going to be a little bit stronger. But uh, why not do it right the first time? You know, but unfortunately, there's just not much that could be done about this when you start cutting into it and there's stitches. Now, with a blind stitch sole like this, it makes it a little bit easier. We're not actually really cutting much into the stitches at all um, in most cases. But sometimes we're left with kind of no no option there we go got a nice little chunk like that cut out there looks pretty good so we'll set that guy there that gives you an idea of notching it out right there and lines up perfectly all right so we're back here again we've got the other one skived up and I've also um, worked on these holes here a little bit because they actually are a little bit too small sometimes or uneven so we have to take uh, different drill bits and just drill it out a little more so it's 
more refined, I guess you can say. Now at this point, I'm just gonna take one of my awls, like this here, and I start out with the center hole here, make sure everything's nice and tight. I'm gonna start by making that first initial hole there. I'm gonna take our little brass screw here. Now, these are like wood screw almost type, because they work better with the um, with the leather, but they are a different color. They're not stainless steel, and uh, trying to find stainless steel ones in this size that um, that will fit these properly is next to impossible. So we end up having to use the brass ones because they don't corrode as easily as you know the regular steel type that you may see. Now, they do make stainless steel screws for wood and for leather as well, but they're much too large for this. Just way too large. There we go. It's nice and flush. We got the new ones there. I'm gonna have to buff that out. I kind of nicked it just a little bit there with the screwdriver. Dang it. I hate it when that kind of stuff happens. I mean, it, these are gonna get beaten up anyways, but uh, it upsets me when something like that happens and I'd rather take care of it so I'll have to end up buffing it afterwards. But, you know, it gives you an idea of how these are put on at this point. I'm just going to run through and kind of sand this just slightly enough to make sure that it's, you know, 100% flush. Um, because no matter how much you try to fit it, they're not always going to fit 100% because you could see that little lip sticking out. And we don't want that lip sticking out there of the toe plate. Everything else lines up perfect, but these edges are just a little bit wider. And if we were to go down a size, because these are 40 millimeter, um, the next one down would be a 30, which we don't have again, but I'm hoping to get a hold of. But even if we went down to the 30 mil, those would be just way too small. But uh, anyways, that gives you an idea there. You know, so now we're just going to go ahead and do the other one. I'll sand everything up, do the edging, and I'll meet you back here in just a little bit. Alright, so we're back here again. I've got the toe plates on there. Nice and flush and everything as well. No sharp edges anywhere. So from the side view, it's really not too noticeable. Now there's a bit of a wax coating over top because we of course have to sand everything out so that it's as flush as possible because there's always going to be a little edge somewhere that's going to stick out regardless of how close we get to that size. Um, you know, it's going to happen. So we have to sand that out so it's all as flush as possible. But down here we try to avoid sanding anything else um, just because that really doesn't look all that great either. But uh, anyways, uh, that's how French toe plates are put on. These particular ones, they are, again, the Lulu plates. Um, and then the Triumph ones are the brass ones. But, you know, it's a beautiful shoe, and it definitely should be taken care of well. You know, it's, it's one of those things that if you're somebody who wears out your toes there significantly, this little metal piece here will definitely extend that life expectancy of your soles and save you a lot in the, wrong, in the long run of having to replace your soles every time, whether you go through us or other cobbler shops or, you know, back to the original factory. And this feature can be added on to just about any type of shoe with a leather sole, uh, whether it's Goodyear welted, Blake stitched, um, you know, invisible stitch or blind stitch, what they call it sometimes like this. Uh, some that are even just adhered on too. Some soles that don't have any form of stitching can have this toe plate added on as well. Um, you know, ideally, of course, everything it's best for us to see it in person. And that way, you know, we can 
examine it closer to let you know for sure, you know, quite possibly this might not work for this shoe because of such and such reason. But like I said, most cases with the leather sole, we can put that toe plate on, whether it's the Triumph brass toe plate or the stainless steel Lulu toe plate there. Um, both of them are very resistant towards uh, heavy conditions and wet conditions. They don't really rust up. Again, these are stainless steel, so they won't corrode or rust up. And then the brass ones, of course, that is brass plated with, I believe, stainless steel underneath, but it's a very thick coating of brass on it as well. So it tends to last for a good while um, before it starts showing through um, the more silverish color. Um, but uh, thanks for watching if you have any questions or comments leave them down below um, if you like you can also give us a call or send us an email or if you're local here in the Denver area please stop on by uh, otherwise if you'd like us to work on your shoes and you're not from the Denver area if you're out of state or too far of a drive uh, you can always ship your repairs in for to us such as you know boots or shoes we also do belts bags jackets all sorts of leather goods too um, you know if you like give us a call beforehand to see a rough estimate possibly if we can give you over the phone but if it's a little too complicated we might have to see it in person before even giving a ballpark estimate um, but if uh, if you're shipping it out to us go to our website cobblersplus.com go to the mail-in orders and uh, just follow the instructions on there and we'll be happy to service any items that you may need done um, again thanks for watching please subscribe and like this video i'm hoping to create more and more videos just showing you know different things that we do uh, side by side comparisons of different products and items um, you know product testing as well and eventually possibly even reviews on particular products such as uh, footwear or belts or whatever it may be um, so, yeah, we'll just see you guys next time then. Thanks.